So I want to look at soils from two perspectives. One is a fairly objective description of the soil, the structure, the texture, the grain size, the color, those kinds of objective characteristics. And then another one is to look at the soil horizons, the uh, different layers within the soil that have formed by certain processes that we infer from characteristics of the, the soils. And what's shown here with this uh, prism of soil is a uh, is a, a, a typical uh, layered structure showing the main horizons that occur uh, in at, at least in a, in a typical soil uh, horizon. Uh, this is not does this not mean that these horizons are present in every soil? By no means is that true, but this is the typical assemblage, and it starts with an O horizon. Uh, up at the ground surface. And the O horizon is dominated by organic material, um, vegetation, um, decaying organic material, that sort of thing. And then as you go downward, uh, the fraction of organic material decreases and the fraction of mineral material increases. So in this upper section here, we've got a mixture of organic and mineral material with the, the upper part of that being predominantly organic material and the lower part of it being predominantly mineral material. But there's still a good bit of mineral and organic material uh, in these two layers. And then as you go down, you get to the E horizon. And this is, this is dominated by um, a process called eluviation. Uh, it's right there, eluvial, and perhaps you can remember eluvial uh, goes with E horizon, and then underneath it is the B horizon, and that's dominated by this process, eluvial. So you have to be careful with your pronunciation, eluvial and illuvial. And what these two processes, or what these two words mean, uh, they're referring to the process of the transport of clays. So illuvial means that the clay minerals have been transported downward and so the area has been leached of clays. Um, clays have been transported out. And so what's left behind then are the, res the relatively resistant materials uh, like quartz uh, and uh, they're typically sand to silt sized particles of quartz or, or other um, materials that are resistant to, to weathering. And then the clays are removed from the E horizon. They move, they're moved downward and they're accumulated in the B horizon. So the process of il, the eluvial process or the IL, UVIAL, IAL uh, process is the process of the accumulation of clays. So I think that it's uh, expected then that the B horizon has a relatively high clay content, particularly uh, compared to the E horizon. Uh, and there's also a, um, a, a, a structure to these soils, typically. And there are a couple of options, a granular, blocky, prismatic structure. And I'll, I'll show you examples of those different structures later. And then once you get down below the B horizon, uh, you have the C horizon, and the C horizon down here, this is the parent material from which the soil has formed. So from the B on up, this is really the, the main set of soil horizons. And then the C is really the, the parent material. Around here, it would be saprolite. And underneath that, um, you have the, the bedrock. Uh, and so what this is doing is recognizing that the sea horizon could be weathered bedrock. You could have actually a, a fair amount of, a fair degree of weathering going on in this uh, horizon. Um, but you don't really have the clays moving around. So this, this EB um, uh, system here is a place where the clays have been removed from the E and deposited in the, the B. And so that's really setting up these horizons. And then below that, you have the C horizon. And the minerals there could be chemically weathered and altered, but you don't have the clays moving around. And so uh, you're then below the, the B horizon. And then um, 
you have the R horizon that is the underlying rock. And so the contact uh, can be gradational or it can really be fairly sharp. Uh, sometimes then the designation for the um, contact or for um, formations that share uh, two, the characteristics of two layers is, uh, is indicated like this with AB uh, put together. Now also what's, what's common in some soils is a layer where there are um, other min minerals that have been deposited and uh, carbonate is one. Uh, these are called fragipans and um, caliche for example is uh, a fairly common uh, fragipan uh, that is uh, calcium carbonate precipitated out where it's it's leached out from the rocks above uh, in the soil forming process and then precipitated as a layer or as nodules in the underlying soils. Now superimposed on this um, each one of these horizons can also get uh, one of these letters here and uh, it depends on um, what kind of things are going on but for example the A horizon may get this uh, P designator uh, and that means that it has been cultivated. So often the A horizon, uh, the bottom of the A horizon is defined by the plow depth if the area has been plowed. Uh, the T designator is an accumulation of silicate clay. And so there, the, the B horizon, and really all of these horizons can be further subdivided. And so a BT horizon would be a place where there's been uh, a particular accumulation of, of clays. And then uh, the G uh, designator, this is a strong glaying, it's called. Uh, glay is a, a mineral or is a, a soil that is uh, th that is a dark gray in color and this indicates uh, reducing conditions and uh, uh, this double de w designator is the development of a, a particular color or, or soil structure <laughs>